Tonight we're diving into DDGX. Imagine a destroyer so advanced that it generates enough electrical power to light up 12,000 American homes, while simultaneously firing hypersonic missiles at five times the speed of sound and burning enemy drones out of the sky with laser weapons. This isn't the plot of the next blockbuster. It's the United States Navy's answer to China's explosive naval expansion. And at $4.4 billion per ship, it represents the most expensive destroyer program in American history. The DDGX is estimated to cost $4.4 billion US dollars per ship. Welcome to the future of naval warfare, the DDGX Next Generation Destroyer. Today, we're diving deep into America's boldest naval gambit since World War II, a clean sheet destroyer design that promises to revolutionize surface warfare. We'll explore the cutting edge technology that makes this ship tick, uncover why the Navy desperately needs it, examine real-world scenarios where it could tip the scales of conflict and address the controversial cost overruns that have Congress asking tough questions. Here's why this matters right now. The Navy's backbone is literally falling apart. 22 Ticonderoga-class cruisers, ships that have protected American interests since the Reagan administration, are being retired by 2027. Meanwhile, China now fields over 370 ships and submarines, including 140 major surface combatants outpacing the U.S. fleet numerically. Think about that for a second. While China launches three destroyers for every two America builds, we're still operating ships designed when the biggest threat was the Soviet Union, a country that no longer exists. The DDGX isn't just another warship. It's America's technological answer to a numbers game we can't win through quantity alone. The Navy wants to procure the first DDGX in the early 2030s, and what happens between now and then will determine whether the United States maintains naval supremacy in the Pacific or watches it slip away. Let's start with what makes the DDGX revolutionary. Raw power. And I mean that literally. Remember when your parents yelled at you for leaving the lights on? Well, the DDGX laughs at your electricity bill. This beast will feature an integrated power system capable of generating up to 40 megawatts of reserve power. That's after running all the ship's normal systems. The Fiscal Year 2025 National Defense Authorization Act calls for the Navy to investigate power systems that can generate 40 megawatts of reserve power. Think of it like this. Traditional destroyers are like cars with separate engines for driving and air conditioning. The DDGX is more like a Tesla, one unified power system that can instantly redirect electricity wherever it's needed most. Enemy missile incoming, surge power to the radar, drone swarm approaching, channel everything to the laser weapons. Now let's talk size, because size absolutely matters in naval warfare. The Navy has indicated that the initial DDGX design now prescribes a displacement of 14,500 tons, 4,800 tons, about 49.5%, more than a DDG-51. That's not fat, that's future-proofing. The weapons loadout is where things get spicy. The baseline DDGX design is to include 96 standard vertical launch system VLS cells, with an ability to incorporate 12 large missile launch cells in place of 32 of the 96 standard VLS cells. Those larger cells, they're designed for something that doesn't officially exist yet, but rhymes with hypersonic missiles. Here's a plot twist that has naval traditionalists clutching their pearls. The new rendering strikes the 5-inch Mark 45 gun entirely, a staple of US Navy large surface combatants. No boom boom gun, that's because when you can literally melt enemy drones with concentrated light beams, explosive shells start looking pretty old school. The sensor suite reads like a wish list from a paranoid submarine captain. The AN Spy 6 radar, already the most advanced radar in the fleet, gets supersized arrays that can track a baseball sized object at distances that remain classified. But trust me, it's far. But here's the kicker that should worry America's enemies. The DDGX story begins with failure. Specifically, the spectacular implosion of the CGX cruiser program in 2010. Picture this. The Navy wanted a 25,000-ton cruiser with a nuclear reactor, rail guns, and enough missile cells to make an Iowa-class battleship jealous. Congress took one look at the price tag and said, Are you out of your minds? Program canceled, dream shattered, back to the drawing board. Then came the Zumwalt debacle. Originally planned as a 32-ship class, it got cut to three ships that cost more than nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. But hey, at least we learned what not to do, right? Actually wrong, because the Zumwalt's revolutionary integrated power system is exactly what's going into the DDGX. 
Here's the strategic imperative nobody talks about at dinner parties. The Arleigh Burke design is older than most of the sailors serving on them. The first DDG-51 was procured in fiscal year 1985 and entered service in 1991. These ships have been upgraded more times than your iPhone, and they're literally running out of space for new equipment. In December 2020, the Navy finally approved the DDGX's top-level requirements. Translation, they figured out what they actually wanted. Then, in August 2024, plot twist, they changed their minds. The Navy approved changes to the operational requirements for the DDGX program in August 2024, based on fleet feedback demanding more speed and power. The industrial base is already gearing up. General Dynamics Bath, Ironworks, and Huntington Ingalls Industries, the only two yards that build destroyers, are hiring naval architects faster than universities can graduate them. Gibbs & Cox, the company that designed the original destroyers that won World War II, is back in the game providing engineering support. The Navy's even built a full-scale land-based test site in Philadelphia, where they're literally building ship engines on concrete to work out the bugs before they hit the water. Because nothing says we're serious, like constructing a destroyer propulsion system in a warehouse. But testing in a warehouse is one thing. The real question is how this beast performs when the missiles start flying. Picture this scenario. It's 2035, somewhere in the Taiwan Strait. Intelligence reports a massive drone swarm launching from mainland China. We're talking thousands of unmanned systems, from submarine hunters to kamikaze drones, all converging on the carrier strike group. Enter the DDGX, stationed 50 miles ahead of the carrier. Its AN Spy 6 radar picks up the swarm while they're still forming up. The ship's combat information center looks like a scene from Star Wars. Operators managing multiple directed energy weapons, while the AI-assisted Aegis system prioritizes threats faster than any human could. The first wave hits the laser envelope. No ammunition expended, no reload time, just continuous beams of concentrated energy turning million-dollar drones into expensive confetti. The ship's IPS automatically manages power distribution, pulling electricity from non-essential systems to keep the lasers firing. But here's where it gets interesting. While everyone's watching the fireworks, a Chinese destroyer flotilla moves to flank. The DDGX doesn't blink. Those 12 large diameter VLS cells weren't just for show. Hypersonic missiles streak out at Mach 5 plus, giving the enemy ships about 90 seconds to contemplate their life choices. Now here's a capability that changes everything. Successfully tested in October 2024, TRAM addresses a key logistical challenge by minimizing the time warships spend out of action for rearming. The DDGX can reload its VLS cells at sea. No more sailing back to Guam every time you run low on missiles. Let's talk endurance because wars aren't won in Hollywood-style 90-minute battles. The vessels are expected to have 50% greater range, a 120% greater time on station, and a 25% reduction in fuel burn compared to current U.S. Navy destroyers. That means while Chinese ships are heading home to refuel, the DDGX is still on station, still watching, still ready. But it's not just about shooting. The DDGX's role as an air defense commander means it's quarterbacking the entire battle. It's talking to F-35s, feeding targeting data to submarines, coordinating with Space Force satellites, and probably trash-talking enemy ships over international radio frequencies. Okay, maybe not that last part. Here's a scenario nobody's talking about. Arctic operations. As ice melts and new shipping routes open, the DDGX reduced signatures, infrared, acoustic, and electromagnetic, make it nearly invisible to enemy sensors in the harsh Arctic environment. Imagine a 14,500-ton destroyer playing submarine. Of course, this technological marvel comes with a price tag that has Congress asking uncomfortable questions. Let's address the elephant in the room, or should I say the $4 billion elephant. The January 2025 CBO report estimates the DDGX's average procurement cost in constant FY 2024 dollars at $4.4 billion about 33% more than the Navy's estimate of $3.3 billion. That 33% difference isn't a rounding error. It's the entire defense budget of some NATO countries. The CBO basically called out the Navy saying, and I quote, such an outcome, however, seems unlikely given the history of surface combatants. Translation, nice try Navy, but we've seen this movie before. Here's the dirty secret. America's shipbuilding industry is hanging by a thread. We've got exactly two shipyards that can build these destroyers. If one has a major accident or labor strike, the entire program grinds to a halt. Meanwhile, China has shipyards that can build destroyers 
like Ford builds F-150s. The technical risks read like a Murphy's Law checklist. That revolutionary hull form still being tested in scale models, the integrated power system that's supposed to power all these wonder weapons, the land-based tests won't be complete before they start cutting steel for the first ship. Then there's the political minefield. Every time the Navy asks for money, someone in Congress asks, why not just build more Burks? It's like asking why we need smartphones when flip phones still make calls. Sure they work, but good luck running Instagram on a Motorola Razor. Here's a problem nobody wants to discuss. Crew size. The Navy's facing its worst recruiting crisis in decades, and the DDGX, despite all its automation, will still need highly trained sailors to operate systems that don't even exist yet. We're literally training people for jobs that haven't been invented. Our allies are watching this with a mixture of excitement and concern. Japan and South Korea are interested in the technology, but they're also developing their own next generation destroyers. If the DDGX fails, it doesn't just hurt America, it undermines the entire Pacific Alliance structure. But perhaps the biggest controversy is timing. With tensions over Taiwan reaching a boiling point, can we afford to wait until 2032 for the first ship? So here's what we've learned. The DDGX represents the most ambitious surface combatant program since the age of battleships. It's a 14,500 ton answer to the question, how do you fight a war when your enemy has more ships, more missiles, and home field advantage? Let's rapid fire the game changers. Integrated power system generating 40 megawatts of reserve power. Check. Directed energy weapons with unlimited magazines. Check. Hypersonic missile capability. Check. 50% greater range than current destroyers. Check. Stealth characteristics that would make a submarine jealous. Double check. The Navy's betting the farm on getting this right. Procurement of DDG-51s would end sometime after procurement of DDGX begins with a planned three-year overlap to ensure continuity. That's not a transition. That's a revolution in slow motion. Here's the strategic bottom line. The DDGX isn't just about maintaining parity with China. It's about establishing such a decisive technological edge that quantity becomes irrelevant. It's the same philosophy that gave us nuclear submarines and stealth bombers. When you can't match numbers, you change the game entirely. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, it's risky. And yes, Congress will probably have 17 more hearings about the cost overruns. But here's what history teaches us. Naval supremacy isn't inherited. It's earned, one revolutionary design at a time. From John Paul Jones to Chester Nimitz, American naval dominance has always required bold investments in tomorrow's technology. So here's my question for you. In a world where a single hypersonic missile can sink a billion dollar warship, is $4.4 billion too much to pay for a destroyer that might be unsinkable? Or have we reached the point where traditional surface combatants, no matter how advanced, are just expensive targets in an age of space weapons and quantum computing? Let me know in the comments below. Will the DDGX secure American naval dominance for the next 50 years? Or is this the last gasp of the surface Navy before everything goes underwater and into space?